Yo, what's up guys? And welcome back to another great video. So glad to see all of you again. That two week break felt really good. Uh, I was in Tenerife with my girlfriend and we had a great time. We were swimming in the ocean. We saw some dolphins and turtles. And last week I came back and it's super cold here in Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, a couple of days ago, we even had the snow falling. I like the cold winters here in Switzerland since I was also born in January, so I'm a winter boy. Anyway, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to color grade ProRes footage that was captured on the iPhone 13 Pro Max using LumaFusion. And what's great about using an iPhone is that you can shoot, edit, and publish your videos all in one without the need of additional tools. Being able to make that makes it convenient, allowing us creators to produce content anywhere. And that's why we're outside, just to be with nature and edit our video on our phone. Now, like I mentioned, the iPhone 13 Pro Max can capture ProRes. And what's great about it is that you can shoot in ProRes, which captures more information. And more data means better video quality. Now, the ProRes video codec is widely used by many professionals in the film industry. In an upcoming video, I will talk more about the advantages and disadvantages of shooting in ProRes on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. But for now, all you need to know is that shooting in that codec will give you a lot more flexibility when it comes to color grading your footage. So the video editing app we will be using is LumaFusion. It's well designed and it's made for uh, those that want to shoot and edit on their iPhone while still on a location and produce professional looking videos without the need to transfer all of the clips uh, onto your Mac. Because as we know, transferring ProRes footage uh, from your iPhone to the computer can take quite a long time. And one of the bigger problems is the workflow. But I guess if you edit your video straight uh, in LumaFusion, you can get right into it to cut that video to then be published. Now, LumaFusion is currently only available for iOS users, but the good news is the team is working on an expansion and it will also be available for Android users in the future. For one time payment of $30, you get access to all its great features. Now, if you're looking for a free editing app that supports ProRes on the iPhone, iMovie is a great option, but I prefer LumaFusion as it's more powerful and is my go-to app for serious projects when editing on my iPhone. Now, before we hop into LumaFusion, keep in mind that ProRes Media uh, uses large amount of storage, so make sure to have plenty of space available on your iPhone to work with ProRes Media. Now, when it comes to color grading, I always use scopes to accurately identify the luminance and colors in my shots. Um, when I'm at home, I use Final Cut Pro. But since we're using LumaFusion, unfortunately, it doesn't have any built-in scopes yet. For that reason, we will have to rely on our eyes for now. So I'm gonna sit on this rock while we color grade our video. So we're first gonna open up LumaFusion. And then in here, I'm gonna create a new uh, project. So I'm gonna tap on here, and then I'm gonna name my project Color Grading Tutorial. And the frame rate is gonna be 25 frames per second, since the clips that I'm about to import are all shot in 25 frames per second. The aspect ratio will be 16 by nine. Now, important to mention when setting your project is that you want to choose the right color space to edit your video. Now, since the footage was shot in ProRes Dolby Vision 10-bit HDR, we're going to work in a wide gamut HDR color space using the HLG format. HDR stands for high dynamic range. And when shooting in HDR, you get better contrast, more vibrant colors, and will look better overall than shooting in SDR, which stands for standard dynamic range. If you turn off HDR in the camera settings on your iPhone, you end up shooting in SDR. Now, if you have mixed footage that were shot in HDR and SDR, I recommend working in a standard Rec. 709 color space. Now, if you're starting out, understanding that is kind of complex, but you know, just follow these guidelines and you're good. And since all of the clips were shot in ProRes 10-bit HDR uh, Dolby Vision, I'm gonna select Wide Gamut HDR HLG as my color space. So once you're ready, hit the plus on the top right and now we're gonna import our footages. So go to the top left and select photos. And I'm gonna go over to videos and I'm gonna select 
um, this clip over here and then I'm gonna shorten it to around three seconds. And then I'm gonna import it into the timeline. And then the second clip we're gonna edit is this clip right over here, uh, which was shot in uh, Tenerife, in Santa Cruz. And I'm gonna shorten it as well to around three seconds. Boom. By the way, if you wanna follow along, the clips are available using the uh, link in the video description below. So we're first gonna double tap on the first clip and you have actually different presets to choose, but we're gonna use the original preset to start adjusting the normal colors in our video. Now levels allows you to adjust the brightness for each luminance range and the contrast between them. Brightness lightens or darkens your image. Uh, the contrast adjusts the luminance between the dark and light areas. Then you have saturation, which controls the intensity of color in your image. Next is Vibrance, which controls saturation of cool colors such as blue and green and has less effect on warm colors. So this is especially useful if you want to keep the skin tones intact while adjusting the saturation of other colors. Then you have the Highlight Shadow Radius, which adjusts the transition from uh, shadow to the highlighted areas. Highlight simply controls the highlights without affecting the shadows. Now the shadows controls the shadows without affecting the highlights. So next we have color temperature. Sometimes the colors in the image may look out of balance. So I use the color temperature controls to adjust uh, my white balance. Then we have gamma. Uh, you can use the gamma slider to adjust the range of luminance to either bring out the details in the shadow areas or in the highlights. And the hue rotates all the colors equally. I use this to create the look in my image. Last is the tint. I don't use this that often, so I won't go too deep in it. So the tint basically adjusts the color of white. When selecting a color using the eyedropper, it will create an overall color cast of that color you've picked. So the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to the gamma slider, and then I'm gonna move it to the left to lift the shadows a bit. And if we head over to the before and after, we can see that we lifted some of those shadows. And I can even further adjust it uh, using the highlight uh, and shadow amount. So by reducing the uh, highlights to around 90, I will have more detail in the sky. And I'm also going to lift the shadows a little bit more to around 20, 0.2. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is actually uh, add more saturation. So I'm going to increase it to around 1.20. And I'm going to reduce the vibrance which uh, reduces the colors in the blues and green areas to around minus 40 or minus 0 0.4. And I'm gonna increase the saturation again. And this way, all the colors uh, are evenly saturated. Let's look at the before and after. And the next thing I'm gonna do is make uh, this shot a little bit more warmer. So, to do that, I'm actually gonna add some red into the shot, around 1.05. And then I'm gonna push the blues into the yellow, around 0 0.95. And then, I'm add, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of green to it. And if we look at the before and after, you can see that we made the shot a little bit more warmer. I feel like we can add a little bit more contrast, so I'm gonna uh, slide it towards the right to around 1.07. The next thing I'm gonna do is use the levels to increase the shadow, just to create a little bit of that vintage look. Not too much. Around here seems right. And now we can already create our look. 
So by using the hue, we can actually move this slider to the left to create that orange and teal look. I think at around 0.3, this looks great. So if we look at the before and after, boom, huge difference. I might decrease the saturation a little bit to around 120. Might be a bit too strong. So the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is how you can add a sort of softness to your video. So we're gonna head back and we're gonna duplicate this clip by selecting this icon over here. And then we're gonna select the clip on top by double uh, pressing it. And then we're gonna add a Gaussian. I'm gonna select this one, Gaussian 20. And then we're gonna head over to the fit, frame and fit. And in here, I can go to blending and reduce the opacity. I think around uh, 14 looks great. You can use the blending as well as the uh, Gaussian's radius to get uh, that soft look in your uh, video. So if we head back and look at the before and after, we added that nice softness to our video. So let's now color grade our second clip. I'm gonna double tap on it, and then I'm gonna select original. And the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the gamma. I'm gonna lift the shadows a bit by moving the slider to the left. And the next thing I'm gonna do is lower the highlights to around, around 80. Seems fine. And then lift the shadows again to around 0.10. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is add saturation around 1.20 and reduce the vibrance just a little bit. Around 0.1 seems right. Now this shot uh, looks too cool for my taste. So I'm actually gonna, again, um, move the slider towards red to introduce red into our image. And then I'm gonna move the blue slider towards yellow around nine. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of green to it. I find that it's too yellow. So I'm gonna reduce the yellow in the shot. And also a little bit of that red and let's look at the before and after, huge difference. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually uh, lift the shadows to create a sort of fade. And I'm also going to add some contrast into our shot just to make it look punchy. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is actually um, adjust the hue to create an orange and teal look. And around 0 0.15 seems good to me. Let's look at the before and after. Looks great. A little bit more contrast, maybe around 1.1 seems good to me. Let's now add a little bit of softness to our video so i'm going to head back i'm going to duplicate the clip and tap on the clip above and then i'm going to add a gaussian and then i'm going to head over to frame and fit and i'm going to reduce the opacity in the blending to around let's say 10. this seems good uh, we're gonna look at the before and after. I'm also gonna add a little vignette to it. So to do that, I'm gonna head to the color and effects and then go tap on this icon and then choose vignette three. And I'm gonna actually reduce the intensity and the radius as well. 
And if we look at the before and after, it adds a subtle vignette to our uh, video, focusing the attention on those two buildings. And that's about it. Here's the before and after. So we can actually save our color grade as a preset and to do so hit the plus icon and we're gonna name it Pro Res LUT. Hit the plus icon. So when I head back and add another clip, uh, I will be adding this one over here. I can double tap on it and then head over to the star and then select ProRes LUT and this will automatically add it to our new clip which looks really nice. If we look in the before and after, huge difference. So to export our clip, we're gonna head over to this icon over here and then we're gonna select movie and we're gonna save it to our photos and the resolution is set to 4K, frame rate is 25 frames per second. Now for the video quality, I choose economy if I plan on uploading the clip onto YouTube. The color space will be uh, HDR and the video codec will be HEVC. Now if this doesn't work for some reason, then just choose Apple ProRes 422. Everything else I leave how it is and I'm now going to export the clip and it's going to take around nine seconds to export um, this clip. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful in terms of setting your project in Illuma Fusion uh, when using ProRes footage shot on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, as well as color grading and exporting it for your social media. Now, if you have any further questions, make sure to leave a comment down below. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe to not miss out on the latest smartphone filmmaking tutorials. Make sure to download my free smartphone filmmaking guide to get started making quality videos on your phone. Also make sure to join the private smartphone filmmaking group to share your work and get feedback from others. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you the next time.